Good morning, folks. As we wait for the next heliocentric planetary geometry, we've seen a complete calming of the Earth-facing side of our star. We've had no big flares or even moderate-sized ones, and this is as the sunspot number skyrockets. That new group center disk grew like crazy and went from this to this pretty much overnight. Let's zoom in on the three most Earth-facing active regions. They now each have some good size and bipolar magnetics, but none are mixing to a level that should produce big flares. A smart betting man would eye the new one, and the trailing group as better candidates than the leading southern sunspots. Also have a new group cresting the limb now. A sunspot peak would add to the mid-level earthquake warning as the northern coronal hole faces Earth today. You can see it is green positive while the southern opening is red negative. We see some growing power to the northern hole compared with two days ago here on Iswa and this happens as a dip in the coronal fields allows near-Earth influence to quickly slide back into positive. That won't last long. In the last six hours, Mercury has geocentrically conjoined Saturn over there on the right. Saturn looks so small by comparison because of how far away it is. Top quakes of the day were in South America, and actually it's the lower magnitude rumble that takes the cake as I've never seen an earthquake there before, well off the fault line. We also had yet another China uptick, at least a handful of injuries have been reported. Let's quickly review what we know about the ice. In the Arctic, it bottomed out in 2012, but it spent most of this year 50% higher than those low marks. Antarctica has broken all-time high ice marks three years in a row, but AGW proponents say it doesn't matter because the ice is getting thinner. Whoops. Turns out that the only thinning portion is right above that massive underwater volcano in the western sheet, and the rest is much thicker than expected. Admit it. It's a little funny. A paper recommendation from Gatherer314. Did you know that irradiance is all they look at for a solar climate impact? At least that was true. This makes more than 200 papers in the last four or five years on how space weather can affect the climate too. If you are shocked at the original omission, we have something in common. And this likely explains why the IPCC has failed to correctly predict anything for almost 20 years. I've also linked an article on geoengineering. Still no admissions of current use, but at least the experts are expressing caution, if not outright concern, over the proposition. Last article is about how a virus can take out billions of life forms in less than two weeks. Luckily, it's phytoplankton. It's linked for you below. We have a new tropical system developing near the Philippines. It is set to cross the country and continue on towards Vietnam. I'm also monitoring two systems in the Indian Ocean, one north, one south. In North America, I'm not sure which is more concerning, negative 35 creeping towards the border at this time of year, or the dip tremendously below average down into the Gulf states. We have multiple lows at play, each with a brief warm-up delivered on the eastern convergence followed by bitter cold with the western drive of Arctic air southward. The snow line here is absurd. We've got watches both east and west today. An Atlantic low is driving moisture to the coastline there, while the two smaller flows from the last 36 hours remain and meet somewhere over France. We see yet another flow driving way, way north, only to crest back down under northern coastlines and a familiar low to the southeast. No shocks in the purple weather alerts tonight. In Australia, you need to note how the flow up from the south collides along the entire northern arch of the country. Also got a strong moisture flow to New Zealand. Weather shares, always appreciate it. Got some precipitation totals and shots of our star to close. It's 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.